You've probably been asking yourself, you two, what the fuck is Gary? What up, homies? It's your boy. It has been a hot, hot minute since I've been on YouTube. And you're probably asking yourself, yeah, where have you been? I've been on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok is apparently super fucking lit. Let's, let's go back a few months. So I was working at Journeys and all like the last like three months before I quit, I started getting this crazy pain in my right ankle. I was in a boot, I was on crutches, I was taking like pretty much any type of pain med I could that was like not illegal or like I had to do some sketchy stuff to get it. It got to the point to where my district manager was like, I don't know if you're gonna be able to do this job, which she was right. And I was low-key kind of hoping she would say that and talk to my wife about it. And my wife said, I'm making pretty good money right now. Quit your job, take a load off. Now is the time for you to invest in your content creation, your dream, your passion. And I said, okay, became a stay-at-home husband. But exploring TikTok, I made a video using a, a if you use TikTok, you'll understand it. If not, get on TikTok. I used a sound by another creator and essentially the sound was some, it was a, a black woman who was being ridiculed by someone else because of the way she talks. Um, kind of talks like me, you know, uh, not really using AV, just, I'm just talking, using email, whatever. They're essentially ridiculing her that she had never been to the hood before, obviously because of the way she talks. And it really resonated with me because I get that all the time that I act white and I wanna be white and you know, because I'm an alternative black kid, like I don't wanna be black, like I'm not black or I'm not from the hood. Which technically I'm not from the hood. I've lived in trailer parks my entire life. Like they got kind of sketch the some of the trailer parks that i grew up in but i wouldn't necessarily consider them the hood i didn't i know ne i've never lived in in the suburbs like where i live now is the closest thing to living in the suburbs um ever and i live on a dead end road in a <laughs> in a mobile home like a just a big this, this is the biggest house i've ever had and it's not that big it's just a double wide mobile home so i i made that video and it blew up i, I used the sound and I just incorporated my own like traumas and things people have said uh, to me and about me, and it, it blew up. A lot of a lot of people resonate. A lot of people of color resonated from like indigenous people and Hispanics, uh, black kids, and so I started making new friends and started resonating with like these these people. And from there, I made another video because I was excited. Like I was excited that I was like. There's more people, there was way more people out there that grew up similar to me that were bullied for being, you know, for the way they talked and the way they acted and act, you know, whatever. So then I made another video of me dancing, uh, of how excited I am as a, you know, meeting more alternative black people, you know, people in like the punk scene, the emo scene, you know, the pop punk scene and stuff like that. And you know, that's my bread and butter. Uh, that that's me that's that's where i grew up in like fallout boy till the day i die you know whatever whatever you however you see emo as like the genre from the midwest to whatever or my chemical romance fallout boy that's more so what i'm talking about that was my shit growing up y'all know this from there is really where i started to, like that post also blew up a lot of alternative kids started coming in and then somebody at some point mentioned that i looked like an emo like a like emo uncle phil and i was like that's hilarious so i changed my name temporarily or what i thought to emo underscore uncle phil on tiktok somewhere in december i i like bring me the horizon i like bring me the horizon a lot um even some of the new music i like a lot and i also like baby metal i love baby metal i did a skit with that sound and it went viral to the point that Ali Sykes himself duetted the video and reacted to it and then that went viral and that is when I started getting flooded 
with followers, flooded with comments. It, it felt like it wasn't going to stop. I'd never experienced this before. And I've been a content creator since 2013. And I've never ever in my life experienced this before. I was starting making content every day, every day, multiple times a day, posting multiple times a day, these skits of different bands that, popular bands from when I was a kid. And it just became a brand. It became this brand of like Emo Uncle Phil, which I didn't want that to be the name, my username for when I actually blew up, but it was. Now I have this, I, I developed this community and I started doing, I did one Dance Gavin Dance video, like a, my representation of like what Dance Gavin Dance like sounds like. And then that went viral. <laughs> Now it's time to figure out where to go from here. And I think the next step is to get back to creating content, upgrading this camera, um, get back, getting back on Twitch, getting back on YouTube, um, th doing this Patreon and make, just making more content and engaging with my newfound community. Cause y'all are awesome. Y'all are fantastic I, I i love this uh and and doing my best to not burn myself out yeah bye Is that the middle? Oh fuck, my, my trash. And I totally forgot to bring my trash can to the road. That is, that is a big ol' L for your boy.